Hello and welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robin Sun. Please do like and comment and subscribe and share and have fun in this video. Today is Friday and we are making a new kind of paper chain. Now this won't be new to everybody. I know it's been done lots of times before. It's all over Pinterest. Um, but anyway, it's new to my channel. I've never made this on my channel before. So here are the little links and they are graduating in color from a very pale green to a darker blue and then back down from darker blue to very pale green. And I figured, you know, we can in this video just kind of move forward. So here's our video. Here are our little papers. Let me show you what I'm doing to um, cut up these papers. First of all, let me tell you that I am using Astro Bright's paper. This is um, 24 pound or 89 um, GSM. Um, it comes in a pack of 300 papers with all of these colors in it. So I've used that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. I think that's right. Um, so I got this at a big box store and I've also seen it at a um, Staples store. Astro Brights is like a company that, I don't know, I've just seen astrobrights.com. So for 300 pieces of paper, this kind of seemed like just the right thing to make paper chains from. So here is a piece. I keep cutting these papers and then using them in different paper chains just to check it out. Um, but let me show you how to make you know, a piece that's just this big. So the first thing we do is set it up portrait long ways like that and fold it in half. And you don't need to bone folder this um, when we actually get around to cutting the piece of paper. Um, yeah, we're cutting it in a whole new shape. So if the outside has some irregularities, that's fine. Okay, so now we've got this paper folded in half. We are going to now fold the front to the front. And just make sure the fold and this edge and the corners and everything are all matching up. Although, again, this is not, this is not a uh, study in perfection um, because we end up cutting it differently anyway. So there, we have sort of a fan fold. And um, let's cut these and then we'll do the last fold. So just take your scissors and cut down. It's a really good thing that this doesn't need to be perfect. Um, we actually only need one more of these, but you would cut all of these papers for the sake of time. We won't. And then you take this long strip, fold it in half, and cut that. So you will get eight of these little papers um, from, sorry, I'm yawning, it's not you. Um, I'm not breathing properly. Uh, so yeah, so I just needed one of these little um, papers. Um, you get eight of them per color. So if we took just by the by, we took a ruler, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's there. So that's um let's see to there is 12 inches or about 30 centimeters and then we get another like four and a half so 16 and a half inches which would be 30 about 40 centimeters um out of one piece of paper two like two and a half papers would give you a meter um if that's 16 then yeah about two and a half papers would give you about a yard a little bit more than a yard a little bit less yeah anyway okay so here we are we started out with the palest green color medium green dark green then a teal color a medium blue and then a dark blue and then just to keep it sorry um rolling we've got a dark blue teal uh medium blue teal dark green paler green super pale green and now we need to make the next i'm gonna hang this up on a little hook i rigged um so now let's talk about making these links I call this a double fold link and this diamond shape is like the easy breeziest shape to cut so we folded it once in half one way and in half again double fold right so we're going to cut now this is the folded edge we need to leave a little bit of this uncut so let's say about that much of it uncut and then we're going to cut to a point kind of in the middle of the paper right like that and then we're going to cut from that point down to the point right there So that's staying together because we didn't cut it all the way to the point like we did here. Okay. So now we need to make a hole in the center of this. So come down the edge a little bit from the end and make a cut there to, um, sorry we're just following the angle right there so I did sort of a poor job but close enough for government work all right so these are all extras so we've got sort of half of that diamond shape and we've kept some fold there and some fold right there um, but we cut to the point down at the bottom so that's what we got and we can open it up hello goodbye so now we're going to do double greens the way we did double blues so you open it up and take half of the link and put it through the hole of the one before and then you kind of loop that closed now these get all scrunched up when it's not hanging but as soon as the paper chain hangs these will all you'll you'll get a nice row of diamonds so this is that palest green we can make another double fold and then again leaving a little bit um, that's not cut right there and coming to a point that's about halfway down the paper and now we're going all the way to the point 
Now we'll cut the inside and we want this line of cut to echo that line or ripple or mirror or follow the outside line. And again, please don't worry. When this is hung up on a wall, you really won't see just exactly how perfect that is. Although, with practice, we'll get better and better and better. All right, now we need green. So I'm going to just keep on going here. Um, yeah, so how are you? Are you fine? Are you well? Are you happy? Oops, it's still there. I hope you are. So I was thinking, one of the things that's great about paper chains is that um, we get to decide what we're going to think about while we are making this paper chain. So maybe you're making this paper chain for somebody's birthday and you can think about how much you love and or appreciate them. Um, you can use their favorite colors or maybe they have a summer birthday or a winter birthday and you can use whatever. You can use the um, colors of their season depending on what your season is, where you live. Um, maybe you are a member of a school sports team and you can use school colors. Uh, yeah, so we can play with the colors having meaning, giving support to the people we are helping to celebrate. Um, we could also use it for anything else that has meaning in our lives, like we could use the colors of love, whether it's Valentine's Day or not. We could use the colors that maybe we're just going to make ourselves our own, our very own paper chain to be beautiful. I have a wonderful paper chain that I have up on the door of my bedroom, you know, across the frame of the door. Um, and I was making the project to be a part of, um, actually it's up on my Etsy shop. Is it? No, I don't. Well, yeah, no, I think it's not. I mean, but I made it for a project that was up on my Etsy shop. That's what I was thinking. Um, so it has all these sort of reds and tans and browns and ivory like that. Um, yeah, so you can make something that just has colors that you like, like this. Or you can make something that, um, you know, supports a team or a friend or so this is the part that had the folds and I'm leaving a little bit there there we go. and you just keep going. You can use graduated colors the way I did. It could be happily. It could be a chain with just one color. And if all you have is white paper or newspaper, you might want to do a quadruple fold if it was newspaper, you know, double the double fold, um, because newspaper isn't very strong. Um, but whatever color you've got, 
um, you can use those colors. You can use a single color. You can just go back and forth between two or three colors. Um, red, yellow, blue, or white, pink, red, or yeah, whatever color combination thrills you. You could, ooh, I had never thought of this before. You know how I've talked about making manifesto paper? Um, let's see if I can get that file out. I'm still here. I have not run away. Remember I've talked about making manifesto paper? So you could write words that are all about something that's really important to you and type them all up and fill the page, go all the way to the bottom, and then um, you could use that paper to make a paper chain from. So that would be totally cool. Um, yeah. Ooh, on Mondays, I've been making those embroidered pieces um, to um, make uh, to copy onto paper embroideries that I can copy onto paper and they would make a really wonderful textured paper. I mean, it wouldn't really be textured, but visually it would be textured. Um, and you could make something out of that. You could either yourself or if you have children or other humans who um, have more age behind them, who just wanted to play with a box of crayons, you could have somebody scribble all over the papers in colors that they liked and then um, cut up those papers. That would be totally fun. Um, and then, you know, your kids can be a part of it or your partner or your best friend or whoever you make art with. Oh, did I tell you? I am a member of the Camden Library um, Wednesday afternoon art journaling group. And a friend of ours, one of the women who lives out of state, was going to be in state. And we kind of finagled it with the library. I mean, the library figured this out, not us. Um, and we decided to have a live meeting with anybody who wanted to come um, to be able to hang out with each other and make art with each other and have a good time with each other. So we did that last week. And it was stupendous. After two years of meeting in this group um, on Zoom, which actually is what made it possible for this woman who came from out of state. I mean, otherwise we wouldn't have even known her. I mean, think about that. If there hadn't been a pandemic, this group that had been a, a, vert, a real meeting in the library for a couple of years, for like two years, and then the pandemic happened... And the woman who runs it, Amy, um, decided that we shouldn't meet in person anymore, you know, because of all the social restrictions. And she took the meeting onto Zoom. And because the meeting was on Zoom, um, we were able to have members of our group from out of state. So there has been a woman from, um, let's see, one woman from Pennsylvania, one woman from New Jersey, a couple of women from Virginia, um, a woman from Colorado. I think she's our furthest away person. Um, So I think that's, oh no, there's a woman from Connecticut. Um, I don't think we've had anybody from New York. Why am I thinking we did? I don't know. 
I don't think we have. Um, but anyway, it's just really fun that we've gotten to know um, lots of people from away and lots of people from around this neck of the woods. Very fun. All right, this is going to be my last link. I mean, I'll keep making the chain until I use up all the papers, but here on the video, this is going to be my last link. So, isn't this totally cool? La 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 la. Da, 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 da. There we go. So, I hope you try this. It's really fun, and one feels like one has accomplished quite a bit when she or he makes a paper chain and it gets to be really long and you can hang it across your whole living room, bedroom, sorry, throwing these around. So I wish for you many accomplishments, accomplishments in art, accomplishments in any other part of your life. Um, yeah, just wonderful stuff. I wish you all the gumption you need to make things come true for you that you need to come true. I wish you moral courage. I wish you physical strength. I wish you successful accomplishments in your life, even if it's just a very colorful paper chain. So I will see you next time. Have a great week. Bye.